Hello everyone, welcome back to Everything Talk with Miss Marie. Yes, you know I talk really, really fast and I'm gonna try my best to slow down today. But today is Friday and you know what that means for me. Fun day Friday, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yes, um, I'm excited about today because I'm gonna be answering some random questions from my friends and family. I text them. I was like, you all, I'm about to do this random question thing on YouTube, so I need all of you all to send me some questions. And they all sent me a question. Um, first, I want to say um, thank you all for checking the... First, 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 I want to say thank you all for checking the girl out. I love it when you all check me out. I appreciate every second um, that you all check me out. And second, I want to say whatever you do, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And if you have a comment, leave that too. Also, if you have a question for me, drop it. I will try my best to answer it. Um, um, this is going to be really exciting. My friends and family came through for me. They sent me some questions. I wrote them down. I put them in here. Like I, I looked at the question, but trust me, once I fold them up and put them in here, I don't know what's coming out and what's not coming out. So um, this is going to be really, really fun. One thing about it, look, I got on my shirt too. Um, that my daughter, Coretta Nicole, made for me. Probably overthinking everything. So with these questions, you know I probably would be overthinking when I be answering them, but I'm gonna try my best to answer them to the best of my ability. I'm not certified in anything. I love to talk to people. I love to answer questions the best way I can, give you my opinion, and that's what I'm gonna do with these questions. So we're gonna get into this, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can't I can't help but to keep saying that, you all, but I am excited about it because this is Fun Day Friday. Even though I don't seem like I'm having really, really a lot of fun, but it's Fun Day Friday. Anyway, so we're going to jump into this. And um, like I said, I'm going to answer 25 questions from my friends and my family. And I want to apologize to you all if I do not read your question. If I do not read and answer your question today, trust me, I will do it next Friday. I had to do something, don't I? <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna get started. And um, yeah, with this question, I'm sorry, I have to um, get me a glass of wine. So if you see me sipping on some wine, it's because I need to ponder on a question that someone asked me. So thank you again. So let's get started, let's get started. And like I said, if you have, if you have any question, um, please leave in a comment and I will come back and I will answer that question. To the best of my ability. So thank you all and let's get started. Hey, 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 hey. Shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. Okay. Question, question. I said, I'm, I'm, y'all know I'm country from a little country town. So I'm a little country girl. But trust me, I, I have a big heart. I have a heart of gold. I can say that about myself. Hey, self care, love yourself before you love anyone else. Okay, question number one. We're going to get started. Question number one. What qualities in a person do you fall in love with? What quality in a person do you fall in love with? Y'all, so, this is crazy. And I know this is not a quality, but this is the first thing that I fall in love with, with a person. Like, if I just see them, you know, I don't have a conversation with them. But if I see a person, a guy, gotta be a guy, because I don't want a woman. I'm sorry, that's not me. But if I see a guy, and the first thing I know is about him is his, um, I like to say, arrogant but I'm not gonna say arrogant arrogant I'm just gonna say confident when he walks in a place and he have a confident with confidence where people just kind of like flock to him it's like oh my god I I, I want to be a part of part of his life it's crazy but that's not a quality but that's the thing I fall in love with first but a quality that I do fall in love with a person is that he can communicate with me like about his dreams his hopes his fears his um you know things about him things that scare him things that make him happy things that make him laugh things that make him sad so if a person who could who could communicate those things to me it's something i would completely fall in love with it's like a lot of people like not a lot of people but it's some guys that i you know i talk to and i get real attached to because they are open to me and not that I really fall in love with him, but I get attached to him because I love when a guy can, can communicate openly about his feelings, you know, his dreams, his hope, his passion, his do's, his don'ts, you know, I mean, what scared him. I love that stuff, you know, because I feel like I'm inside of you and you're inside of me. So I, that's a, um, that is one quality that I would fall in love with, that open communication of who you are and how you feel. That's number one. Um, number two is if you could be a member of any tv sitcom 
which would it be? And this is not recording, is it? Yes, it is. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm I'm go I haven't even drunk any wine and I'm losing my mind. But if I can be a part of any TV sitcom, everybody know me. I love sex in the, ci in the, sex and the city. I've been saying sex in the city, but it's sex and the city. I mean, I, I love those four women. You know, I, I would love to be in New York with those women in their clique. I love the way they communicate. I love the way they live. Even though I know it's a TV show, I, I would love that. So sex in the, and the city. Sex and the city. I'm gonna get this right. So if if a TV, if I was offered to be in a TV sitcom, it had to be that even though it's no longer on, but that's the one, sex and the city. And in, anybody know me, they know I love sex and the city. So there's two, yes, yeah. I'm gonna drop them on the floor. <laughs> okay, three. I'm just gonna say next because I'm forget the numbers in a minute. Number three. Um, how would you rank the following in importance? Family, career, love life. So you have to rank them in order. Okay, of course. To <laughs> it's like to me, it would be um, love life, family, career. I mean, to me, that's. I mean. That's just me. Like, I mean, especially knowing that my children are grown and they're doing their own thing. If my children was younger, it would be family, love, life, career. But since they are older and doing their own thing, because, you know, my baby is 27. Come on. He got his life. He got his family. So and my daughter, she's 33. She got her family. So it would be love, life, family, career. I mean, my love life would definitely outrank my career. Don't get me wrong. Like, I would choose my love life over my career. People think I'm crazy about that, crazy for that, but that's just who I am, and that's how I would rank the things. Tell me, how would you rank that? You know, family, career, love life. Leave me a comment on how you would rank that for yourself. Okay, next question is, what have happened to you recently that you realized was a test from God? Oh my God, what have happened to me recently that I have realized that was a test from God? Well, this this right here. I mean, this is like some serious stuff. Like, I got to put my business out there, don't I? But um, uh, uh, someone came back into my life from my past. And um, we have always been friends and we always been connected. But I think the thing that's going on now is that it's a test from God to see where I am in my life and who I am in my life because this person is connected to someone else. And so I think it's a test to see have I matured knowing my situation that I was in in my marriage and what have happened in my marriage and that I got a divorce and all that. And I think this person is a test to see my strength and, and and my patience and my faith in God. So that will happen. Someone from my past have reoccurred in my life. And I'm, to be honest, they make me feel really, really good. Like I haven't felt this good in a long time. And they really, really do make me feel alive and happy. But it's just a situation that things cannot happen so but i think it's all a test and it's a test for me and it's a test for them too and it's just where god leading us and so that is things that i think okay i don't know okay next question is if you could choose one place to travel where would you go and why once again once again i i'm not a traveling person i don't travel I will travel now if someone said let's go and I have the money I will go but um as I said before I love sex in the city so I would love 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 to go to New York walk around a city act like I'm one of those girls put on my high heel shoes even though I I don't know how New York is I've never been there but I would love to go to New York City and just live a, a fantasy life of fun and happiness so New York City Next question. Thank you for that question. Um, next question. Um, what is your most embarrassing moment 
what is your most embarrassing moment? Y'all, I have to say this. This is like really, really funny and it's like really, really old. And I don't even really think anyone knew about it, but I remember it was my freshman year of high school. And you know, your freshman year of high school, everyone is like really nervous because back then it was like serious. Now it's just like whatever, we all on the same plane or whatever. But back then it was like really like, you are a crab. You are a crab, you stay in a crab place and you don't try to step up, up over it or anything. So my freshman year of high school, I rode the bus to school and, and um, of course we was all standing out front and I looked up and I saw my mom car driving through. So of course I thought she was looking for me because that's how person I am. I'm, I'm panicking about everything. Like I said, I probably overthink everything, got the shirt on, you know. So I saw the car, car pa passing. So I thought she was looking for me and don't you know, I took off running behind her car like, mom, mom, mom. And I real and then it was like, oh my God, she's not looking for me because she's leaving. But anyway, she dropped someone off, but that was so embarrassing for me. I don't even know if anyone noticed it, but it was embarrassing for me because I did it and I did it in front of everyone because it was in the front of the school. Everyone was standing out there. That was one of the most embarrassing thing I have ever done in my life. So yes, that that was one of the, that was one of the most embarrassing things. I don't know how many times I can say that, but anyway, next question. <laughs> The best part of waking up is Folger in your cup. No, the best part of waking up is knowing that you're alive. You have another day to do what God have placed you on this earth to do. You know, you have another day to be better. You have another day to help someone. You have another day to love someone. That is the best part of waking up is knowing that you have another day to do what God have blessed you to do in this world. Yes, that's the best part of waking up. And foes are in your cup. <laughs> okay, next question. Next question. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, if you could change one thing in your life, what would it be? <laughs> if I could change one thing in my life, what would it be? I mean... I don't, I mean, I don't know, like, that is something to really think about because everything in my life and everything that has happened in my life have made me who I am, where I am today. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> oh my God. When I talk about myself, you all, and the journey that I have been on, I get really, really emotional about it because I'm really, really, truly proud of myself because I have came a long way. I have really, really came a long way. But one thing that I would change a one thing that I would change, what I say? Let me read that again. If if you could change one thing in your life, what would it be? Um, if I could change one thing in my what I I don't like school for real, and I think I don't like it now because I've just been out so long. But I do think the one thing that I would change in my life is that I would have completed. I had went to a junior college before I went to a four year college. But I, I went to the junior college one year and then I transferred over and went to a four year college because I love me some AS, 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 you. I love me some Alabama State. I'm just sorry. So I left the junior college and I went to Alabama State. But the one thing that I would change is that I would have completed that junior college before I went to Alabama State. So I could have had that degree under my belt. I'm not saying that a degree will make me, but I'm just saying I could have had that degree under my belt before I went to Alabama State because, and when I got to Alabama State, of course, I got pregnant and I had to stop. So anyway, that's one thing I would change about myself. I would have completed that junior college degree and then went to Alabama State. So that's something I would change about myself. Other than that, nothing. <laughs> um, next question. Um, if you could paint a picture of a perfect man, what picture would you paint? Um, hmm. If I could paint a picture of the perfect man, what will it be? Um, definitely from God. He would definitely be from God. I'm trying to see like I, I would want someone who who who's not afraid to be himself in front of me, who's not afraid to be vulnerable in front of me, who's not afraid to express himself to me. Um someone who loves family and uh, and friends, you know, someone um who's hard working but knows what's important in life is 
is God and family and then work, of course. Um, I would just, he, he would just have to be a good Christian man, one who served the Lord and lived for the Lord. Standards, let me put it like that, Lord's standards, you know. Um, definitely would be Will Smith. <laughs> I mean, you know, somewhat cross between Will Smith and um, Ghost from Power, you know, I don't know. But um, I hope I answered that question the best way. Um, as my picture perfect man is a man who's gonna love me the way I am for who I am. You know, I mean, I'm the type of person, I, I talk crazy, I fumble my words, I love deeply, and I go crazy at times. But I just want, my perfect man will just love me for me. If you can answer that question, I'm gonna read it again. Leave me your comments on how you would answer this question. If you could paint a picture of a perfect man, what picture would you paint? I mean, I can give someone name because this person that I know, he's, he's He's picture perfect to me, even though he tried to show me something else, but he's picture perfect to me. But I can't, um, I wouldn't do that because, you know, it is what it is. But um, you answer that question. Leave your answer in the comment. I would love to see what you have to say about that question. Next question. Yes. Thank you, friends and family. You all did a great job. These are some really good questions. Nothing crazy yet. Okay. Next question is, how do you get over a breakup? Oh my God, this is really hard. This is really hard because, you know, I just, um, I mean, I just got over a breakup. Yeah, it took, it took a minute. But the thing is, how you get over a breakup, you make a decision. That's what you want to do. You make up your mind, this is what I want to do. Get over it. Don't stay stuck in it, you know. It's going to take a minute. It's going to, it's going to take time. But you have to be dedicated to your decision and making, to getting over it. So, how you get over a breakup is... You tell yourself, you are worth more than the breakup. You deserve more than what you had. And God got something special coming your way. And believe it, stick to it, and and do what you need to do to move forward. And whatever you do, don't look, look backwards. Yes, you're going to step back sometime. But when you step back, don't stay there. Just, you know, feel the moment and leave. But um, definitely... Stay prayed up, um, keep your faith in God, and know that you are more than the breakup and more than what you had and that God got something more for you. Always know that God has something more, something better, something special for you. And that's the way to get over a breakup. It helps me. I don't know. It, I'm, I feel like I'm a better person. And don't get me wrong, like, yes, I, I miss my ex sometimes, but I also know what it what is what is you know and i can't change anything and i can't make anyone be with me but um it is what it is so i i I'm, i feel good you know i feel good and own your own truth own your truth another thing is own your truth when you have a breakup think about what you did and what you didn't do and own it and and and, and don't try to be like it's his fault my fault whatever just own your truth Ask God to forgive you and what you have done and help you to move forward with yourself. And and trust me, things will be so much better. So that's the way to get over a breakup. Look at me. I'm a living witness. Yay! Okay, next question. Moving on. Because I get emotional with that stuff. Okay. What did you think was the most challenging part of being a child? What did you think was the most challenging part of being a child? This is so deep for me, you all, because um, the most challenging part for me as being a child was knowing exactly what I want, or what I didn't want, but I could not say it because when you're a child, you have to listen to your parents and do what your parents and adults say, you know. So you get in situ you you be put in situation where you don't want to be or you don't like because you have to do it because your parents told you to do it or an adult told you to do it. So that was most challenging to me when you know you you put in a situation where you were just miserable because you know this is not what I want. This is not where I want to be, but you have to because of adult. So that is really challenging for me. And 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 I guess that's why I'm so thankful that God blessed me with my children so early. Because right now when I see children and 
how they are, I'd be like, oh my God, I, I could not do it. I mean, because I promise you, if I had a child right now, the child would be wild and loose because I don't want them to be locked down from anything. And I know you have to have rules and regulation, but it's just, I don't like for people to be unhappy. And I don't like for people to be in situations where they don't want to be. I don't know. So that was challenging for me. Next question. We're going to move on. <laughs> Next question. Um, What was your favorite thing to do as a child? Oh my God. What was my favorite thing to do as a child? My favorite thing to do as a child was to play with my um, my dolls. Like, I used to think I was a teacher. I used to really, really um, set my dolls up in my room. All of them, they had names. I can't remember Pam, Judy, Mary, whatever. I used to set them up. I had a lot of dolls. And I used to teach them. So that was my favorite thing to do as a, as a child was to teach my dolls. Because when I was a little girl, I used to want to be a teacher, you know. So I used to love teach my dogs and then at night I used to turn all their heads around because I was scared of them so that was my favorite thing to do as a child it's <laughs> crazy next question um at what age did you become an adult at what age did I become an adult to be honest 16 and I became an adult at 16 because I had a child at 16 and in my mind when you have a child you have to grow up because now you are an adult taking care of a child who needs to be taken care of so at 16 I became an adult I mean and when I say adult mentally maybe not physically because I promise you now I'm about to turn into this big chapter of mine I feel like I'm young and not six I don't feel like I'm 16 but I do feel like I lost those teenage years but i do feel like i'm 33 but i do mentally emotionally i became a duck at 16. yes next question this is like the craziest question ever you are is all vagina the same on the inside i am not a gynecologist so I do not know. I can only say um, that what I feel. And I feel like if all penises are different, different size, different shapes, different color, that vaginas are all different too. But the thing that I do know about vagina and penis is that each one of them is special if you are with a special person. And that if, if you're in love with someone or you deeply like someone, um, vagina and penis is are different but overall they are I do know that all penises because I've seen penises but I haven't seen a vagina because I'm not a gynecologist and I don't do women I'm had to put that out there <laughs> but anyway so I, I mean I'm not a gynecologist so I'm just giving you my opinion I feel like if all penises are different of course all vaginas are different so you answer that question for me whoever sent it. you know who sent this question you know who you are so you drop down in my comment and tell me how you answer that question. And I because I would love to hear that. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. The next question is what what was your first car and what crazy memory do you have with it? What was my first car and what crazy memory was y'all? This is so funny because my first car was a 1977 Honda Civic four speed like with the long stick at the it from the floor up four white it was white it was a bucket car 1977 Honda Civic and the, the craziest memory I have with it that used to backfire like I used to, when I shift gear it used to be like pow everybody knew when I was coming and everybody knew when I was leaving but it was funny I love that car I love that car when I and the thing is I think I love that car more than anything because I purchased it myself with my money that I saved as a young person with a with a child so 1977 Honda Civic white four four gear backfire tearing it up through the city <laughs> so that that was my first car yeah okay next one is what do you do to find peace for yourself what do i do to find peace for myself of course i have a, a morning ritual ritual i guess i said that right okay anyway the thing that i do is like when i wake up in the morning 
I, I don't get on my knees, but I do lay in my bed and I thank God that he woke me up. And because the thing is, he woke me up because he has something for me. And I'm blessed for that. I get emotional about this. So I do that. I, you know, I do that. I wake up and I thank God. And then from there, I would, um, you know, and I would pray. Then I would pray. Thank God. Then I would close my eyes and I would say a prayer or whatever. And then I would get up and I would flip to YouTube. And whatever sermon come up from whoever, Joe Austin, um, I think the man named Daniel, Sarah Jake Robert, or whoever, I would play it because I'm like, I'm going to pray to God. This is the first sermon that came on. So it's something in this sermon that I need to hear. So I do that. And then after that, I would start playing these songs that keep me motivated. It's all positive stuff to let me know that I'm, I'm worth it. I'm a champion. You know, I... I um, I, God still love me. So I would play these songs and I'm broken, but I'm beautiful. You know, I would just play these songs and my whole day would just be amazing, you know. So, and then I always, my biggest thing now is that um, whenever I do anything, it's like these bracelets, braces, bracelets, 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 <laughs> used to be out the head, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And that would say, what would Jesus do? And anytime I think, about something or I do something or I'm challenged with something I always say what would Jesus do and my thing is it, it, I don't care what other people do or say I just do what I need to do because I know in the end I'm going to have to answer to God and I want to be right for myself so I always do what would Jesus do so that keep my peace and, and then keeping all negative people away from me if you're negative if you're if you're fearful of things, if you're scared, I don't want none of it around me because life is crazy as is, and all I need is positive energy coming my way. So I try to keep all negativity away from me. I remove myself from all that stuff, and I just focus on, and I also focus on the things that I have. Like, and we normally focus on things that other people have or what we don't have, but I focus on the things I have. I have an amazing. I have two amazing children i have five great grandchildren i have some awesome friends like males and females you know i have a job that pays my bills so i'm i'm at peace and i know god is watching over me so that's it <laughs> i know i talk too much i don't okay next question okay um what's a belief that you hold with with which many people disagree. <sighs> what belief? This is kind of, I'm going to get a line. It's a line on this. I, I, this, this. This one is kind of tricky for me. I don't even know if I can answer this one because, hmm. What belief? What's a belief that you hold with which many People disagree. Oh my God, you are. I think I'm going to come back to that one. Because a belief that I hold, that I believe in, that other disagree. I believe. Uh -uh. You are, that's a good one. Whoever sent me this question, if you're watching this, drop me a comment and tell me how you answer this question. Because... Oh my God, this one has really got me because I'm not for sure how I believe. Because I, I believe so many things, but I think the things that I believe, other people believe them. So, um, I believe in staying true to who you are, but I think a lot of people believe in that. Um, I believe in soulmates, I do, um, but I think a lot of people believe in that. Um, I believe in God. But I believe a lot of people believe in that. Um, I believe in the afterlife. Um, I think a lot of people believe in that too. So. I don't know. Um, whoever sent me this question, we're going to have to have a serious conversation one-on-one -on -one because I need to know what you think about this because this is kind of hard for me. But I'm going to ponder this one. I'm put this one to the side. And we're going to move on to the next one. Because that, one was kinda, that, one was, that one was deep. And I know this came from somebody who just like me. Deep. So um, thank you for that question. We're going to get to that one again. Okay, next one. And this will be fun day Friday, girl. You done made this stuff too serious. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I said girl, but y'all know. 
Anyway, what's something not many people know about you? What is something many people do not know about me? That I love the smell of gas, not fart gas gas station gas like i love the smell of gas like i literally would go out and pop the tank of the car in sniff it love the smell of gas maybe that's why my head be hurting but that is something many people don't know about me that i love the smell of gas it's like a... <sighs> okay next question what five things you always have with you oh my god what are five things i always have with me Five things I always have with me are um, my chapstick, my cell phone, my wallet, mm -hmm. my social security card, and my driver license. <laughs> gotcha. So the five things I always have with me is my driver license, my social security card, my chapstick, my cell phone, and my wallet. I always have those things with me at all times. Even if it's in the car, they with me. <laughs> um, next question. Uh, uh, uh. Do good guys finish last? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. And even though I want a good guy, and, and, and what do you mean by good guys? Because, yes, good guys finish last. Because women like a challenge. Like, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's different types of good guys. You can have the... the I don't know how to say this, like the real nerdy, nerdy, nerdy good guys where you can overrule them. Of course, they're going to finish last. But then you can have the good guys who know how to handle a strong-minded woman or crazy woman, whatever you want to call us. So, but all in all, they do finish last. And I hate that because when you get my age, you realize that's what you want. But when you're younger, you want the bad guy i don't know what you would call a bad guy i wish you would i want you to answer this question for me so when you see this and you see this question you who sent me this question drop me a comment and answer but i do think good guys finish last i'm sorry because i want me a good guy hey anyway next question what was the first job you ever had oh my god the first job i ever had was working at church's chicken separating the chicken i had to actually go in the cooler and separate the chicken and maybe that's why i'm claustrophobic now i don't know but i had to go in the they don't do that i think the chicken comes separated now but um yes church's chicken and i had to go in the freezer and like separate the chicken put all the white together all the legs all the breasts all the wings all the thighs you know that was my first job my very first job and y'all to be honest every job i had i love i mean because that's who i am I, I love what i do when i do it so every job i had i love but that was my first job yeah okay next question what book had a big influence on you mm, lost and found by sarah jakes roberts and the reason why this book had a big influence on me because I realized there was someone out there just like me. Like, I mean, when I say just like me, like I said, I feel like she is my my spiritual spiritual twin or something. And but yes, Lost and Found by Sarah J. Roberts. That book had a big. It helped me realize that I'm not the only one in this world who had a baby at 16 or 14 or 18. But yeah. So, lost it back. Sarah Jakes Roberts. Next question. Um, would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button on your life? Would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button? I would say re rewind because it's some things that I can go back and redo. Not, you know, just redo and do it better, you know, in a different way. You know, I'm gonna change my whole life, but I would prefer a rewind than a pause. Rewind every day so I can go back and I can kind of like change things. Rewind button. Next question is How do you think you would die? Oh my god, this is a deep question. It's supposed to be fun day Friday. <laughs> okay, but anyway, how do you think you would die? I think I would die choking. I have a big fear of choking. Not being strangled, but choking. So I do feel like that's the way I'm going to die. But I 
pray I die in my sleep, whatever, you know, but whatever God has for me, it's going to be for me. Next question. And this might be the last question, but I'm going to grab a few more because like I said, my friends, and I'm really enjoying this. So I'm going to grab a few, few more and just answer those. Okay. Um, favorite day of the week. Monday and that and the reason why Monday is a favorite my favorite day of the week is because You get a chance to be new like after you go to church on Sunday Even though Sunday is the start of the week after you get all that from Sunday service and praise and worship You should be brand new to start a new week to do new things To love in a different way to help in a different way. So Monday is definitely my favorite day of the week, even though I know a lot of people don't like Monday, but I love Monday. I'm just going to grab a few more and then we're going to get, well, I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Okay, next question is, if you could create a perfect relationship, how would it be? Male, woman, best friend. If the perfect relationship, whether it's with a male or female, or, or friends, or coworker, would be complete honesty, loyalty, open communication you know i got you you got me no matter what you know don't and i wouldn't let anyone come between that so that would be my perfect friendship relationship whatever okay next question is who are you most thankful for and why i am most thankful for my children coretta nicole and Reginald Martez, I am so thankful for them because I know God blessed me with Coretta to have a best friend forever. She's my daughter, but she's also one of my best friends. So he knew that I was going to always need a friend, so he blessed me with her. And he blessed me with Reginald, my son, for a man to love me no matter what. He knew I was going to need a man to love me for who I am unconditionally all the time. So he blessed me with Reginald. So I am so thankful for Reginald and Coretta undeniably I give them the world and I, and it is one more person I'm, I'm thankful for my daughter Courtney like she came to Tuskegee she's not my blood daughter she actually my TU daughter she came to Tuskegee and she she danced with Golden Nest and dance team because I'm an advisor for the dance team and we connected so much when I say she's so much like me it's amazing and I'm so thankful for her she's inspiration to me she motivation motivating to me and, and she she just like Coretta resonant to me I would give my life for her, just like I would do for Coretta Reza. So I'm thankful for um, Courtney, the girl from Reed Elliott, too. I love you, girl. Okay, next question is, is it really okay to date multiple people at once? Is it really okay to date multiple people at once? I think it is okay. You just have to be honest with everyone you date and letting them know that I am dating each one of you because I'm not ready to settle down. Or I'm dating because I'm looking for the perfect husband for me. So I'm not serious with anyone. I'm dating several people. You just have to be honest. It's okay to date several people. Just be honest with each one of them and let them know that you're dating other people because you're looking for your perfect mate. Just be honest. So I think it's okay. Okay, I'm trying to move a little fast because I, I, and I'm past my little 30 minutes. Next question is, how have you been dealing with the quarantine? Um... Trusting in God, knowing that God is in control. I've been dealing with this quarantine by trusting God, knowing that he's in control and learning who I am, the things that I like, um, learning people around me. And I would say this all the time, it's revelation time. And when I say it's revelation time, I'm not saying because God is coming back, because it's time for you to figure out things about yourself, your life. So I, I'm just, just trusting God and I'm trying to live life the best way I can. I feel like this is our new norm and I cannot live in fear of what's going on out there, but I'm not being stupid now, but um, I, I'm doing what I need to do and I'm trusting in God. Okay. Oh, that's a long one. Um, mm, 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 what is the biggest insecurity you had to overcome and what advice do you have for people struggling with that same insecurity? The insecurity that I have had is that um, I'm not good enough. I, I'm not good enough. I'm like, I feel like I'm not good enough because I don't have a college degree or, you know, I'm, you know that I just, I'm, I think the college degree is the most biggest thing for me, but, and that, and I'm just really insecure about that. But the thing is, um, I'm better. I know that God made me. I'm made in the image of God. He blessed me here, that which makes me 
amazing. So that helped me with my insecurity. I'm trying to talk too fast because I feel like I don't want to go too long. But, um, and the thing is, I would just tell any person, love who you are. You know, God made you. you no one is better than anyone. And um, look at the things around you. You have a lot. Believe in yourself. Trust in God. And you can make it. You can make it. Okay, next question is... I don't want that one. Uh, I'm going to answer because y'all know. It was just, I mean, but basically I answered last time. It was like, if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? Um, it's revelation time. I would say it's revelation time. And when I mean it's revelation time, like I just explained, that you need to figure out who you are, things you like about your life, your family, and um, get your house in order. Because one day he's coming back. And, and, and this time, this coat doing this coronavirus is basically saying get yourself together yes the next question is what are the top three things on your bucket list oh my god um top three things on my bucket list one uh, definitely one is nba all-star game yes i, I nba all-star game i got to do i got to do that that is that is number one nba all-star game um um Number two is, it is number two is like simple. It's bungee jumping, not necessarily bungee jumping, but um, something like that. You know, I can't. You know, and number three is like going to New York City, living my Sex in the City life out. <laughs> okay, next question is: When things break, do you prefer to fix them or replace them? I'm the type of person I believe in fixing. I believe in fixing, fixing, fixing. Um, that's just what I, if they break, I prefer, prefer to try to put them back together the best way I can. And I had one more question from someone that asked me, um, do I ever think I will get married again? I, like I said, I could not answer all the questions because I don't pass my limit. I try to keep it under 30 minutes and I'm up here at 40 minutes. But one person did ask me, will I ever get married again? And um, yesterday I told my daughter that I don't think I want to get married again because it just I don't I don't know it's too much in trying to invest into another person and risking that it end and, and then you have to start over and it's so amazing how women have to start over and men don't like I got married I got divorced and the thing is when I got married people had to start calling me by his name I had to change everything on my end when I got divorced I had to do the same thing and he went back to normal just like regular and here I go people still calling me you know by his name and I'm like no you got to call me this now you know so I I say no but I never know what God has for me so whatever God has for me I'm waiting on him I'm trusting in him and that he's gonna bless me with everything that I deserve in life so I just thank him for that I wish, really wish I can answer all the questions, but I do not want this thing to go any longer. So I just want to thank you all for checking me out. And if you have any comments, please leave them below. If you have any questions, please leave them below. And whatever you do, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe. And thank you, friends and family, for your questions. And I appreciate you all. You all have a great, great Friday. And take a shot or two for me. Goodbye.